hello everyone and welcome back to our studios in today's tutorial we are going to do um bonus episode on the December package i actually did a lot of projects i'm supposed to upload now but i lost all because i lost my uh, my, my drive and so i'm going to try break down a fly i saw somewhere there was an effect someone asked me how it was done so i'm just going, going to break that down in a quick tutorial as a bonus tutorial to the December package so this is episode 6 but take it as a bonus one so the first thing we are going to do is to create our canvas or create our workspace or start a new document and to do that the shortcut key is Control plus n or you move over to file as usual come over to new and create a new document so we are going to use this size the width 8 inches the height 10 inches resolution everything keep it as it is so let's move on so everything else is good first thing we are going to try and do is to create a gradient over this okay so we are going to uh, come over here then create gradient now let's click on this if you are using the newer versions of photoshop it will look different but it's the same thing i have this template done here of a gradient so let's now click over here and then change the angle if you want to see the colors you can just click on the gradient here and then click on this stoppers oh yes so you click on this and then let me show you the rgb setting so you can repeat the same thing if you want to All right, so now let's work with the angle. Let's try and turn it. I want the hot orange to be here and the lighter orange is here. So this is okay. Yeah, this, this is okay. Now the effect that was asked about is, is the effect that has this wet paper background effect. And when we, we move in, you will see what I'm talking about. So it's nothing extra O. It's just dropping pictures that you can find on Google and change the blend mode so let's jump into it all right so let's drag and drop the texture so this is the texture right here all right so this is the texture we are going to use for that effect what i'm going to do is to increase it and then probably shrink it a bit so that the wrinkles will be more and then i'll duplicate this all right All right, with this done, we're going to select all of these layers, every one of them, and then change their blend mode to multiply. Now let's put all these layers under lock so that when we move our mouse around or we click and drag, we don't move these things around. They are stationed at this point. So let's select this also, and then we'll put them under lock. Now when you move, it doesn't move. But with that, that. Uh, you can mistakenly move things around which is not which is something we don't want to do so let's put them under lock let's just move on let's drop in our image first i'm going to teach you how i it's already edited because i didn't want to take too much of your time um but i'm going to take you through how i got that so this is the image we're going to use but um this is the unedited one or the on the one that is still with the background so to do this is simple you can just select the image move over to select then subject gives you the initial selection which is very necessary so Control c Control v to copy and paste now you have this but the background is still in the hair so you now use this very important let's learn how to do this you can now use the background eraser tool so if you don't have this selected you probably have the eraser tool selected or the shortcut key is e to get select the eraser tool then you move over to this drop tool here then you can select the background eraser tool so with this selected what you have to do is to just click over let, let me zoom in so you can have a good look at it so you want to click in the area you want to erase out of this so if i click the teeth to remove all the white elements so you realize that the 
the teeth is now plain if i'm supposed to drop a background below let me now let me do that so that we see what we are working on okay with this selection done um probably so you can just select an area you want to delete so for instance with the eye i don't want this part deleted so i want this part deleted when i click on this it goes off you realize that now it's green because the background is green if i did same to the teeth the area of selection goes off so you click until you click and drag your paint so similar patterns to where you are selecting goes off if you want it wild you can increase the tolerance and then when you click it doesn't tolerate much it just keep cleaning similar areas to where you've already clicked and that's not what you want to do so you bring down the tolerance and then you work with it so now let's move to the hair then you can see so we do this just click on the areas increase the tolerance a little click on the areas you want to remove and then paint over so you would have to take your time to do this gradually just remove the hair out of that all right so this this gives you an idea of how it is done Okay, so never mind it looks patchy here there's one more trick we can use to um, hasten the process and that's what we are going to do right now all right so let me close this and drop our edited image here i mean cropped out image so now with this dropped let me zoom in so you can see realize that the removal of hair really didn't do much um, there's still some background left in there that's no problem at all we would do a simple trick that will help the situation so let's re reduce the size of the image it's a bit a little too big now we'll duplicate this um, to do that you would select the image and then press on control press control j to duplicate then you would select the layer below the image below the the one i mean the image below this layer the one below then you select soft light let me turn this off so you see how it goes no you use multiply now this kind of blends the image into the background all right so what you now do to now turn this back on apply a layer mask it's a quick way to solve this hair issue and then you clean this part of the hair so you can increase the opacity of the brush just clean the areas that have the background showing so let me move closer so you see now let's clean this area realize the background is going out just make sure you don't go too deep into the hair all right so as you can see now the hair looks a bit it looks clean the background is all off so we will do this select both layers and then just link layers that's that's about that so once i move this i move both layers so we don't have some shifting happening all right let's turn these images off and then work on the background just a little bit more so what we are going to do is to drop in some images and then blend them into the background add some shapes and we are done okay so this is the image i'm going to drop in drop this image here i'm going to change the blend mode to multiply as well and probably this time we can use soft light yes this is okay and then i'm going to reduce the size of the image or shrink it just a little bit bring it to center i am trying to add that to it so that the image the background becomes a little bit more exciting and then what we are going to do next is to add a layer mask and to do that you select this you select the layer you want to apply the layer marks on and click on this icon here you realize there's a white image that has appeared here that's what you are going to help 
that's what is going to help you mask out the areas you don't want masking out simply in simple terms is like erasing the aspects you don't want in the image and keeping the ones or restoring you know whichever way so this time we are going to mask out which is to erase out so we are cleaning the side all right so now that we've cleaned out the hard edges we can even probably apply some gradient blur so even though it's, the image is a little bit blurry we still want to make it a bit more blurred so that it doesn't take too much attention from the design i think this is just okay if you've seen it's okay even more it's okay now let's bring back our image and see how it looks yes this is okay now let's now draw the shapes we wanted to do I want to add some shapes to it so i'm going to use the uh, oval shape click drag press and hold the shift key so they can have a uniform transformation and then use this you're going to back to the shape tool which is u shortcut key uh, move to fill click on the fill and then click this for no fill let's move out to this this is supposed to be the stroke click on this to add stroke because i'm adding a yellow stroke to it then you can move over to the thickness of the stroke and increase it just a bit more yes let's um, duplicate this because I like this size drop it here all right so let's bring back our image and see how it goes cool let's take it out and um, control T to transform and take this shapes behind this this um, layers here so we can have that effect on it we can equally even take this back if we wanted to but uh, let's try and see how it looks not 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 too much difference so we can leave it there so we want the paper effect to apply on almost everything including the text except for the image so let's bring back our image and see this is cool this is perfect all right so at this point i want to put some apron on here and uh i already have an apron here so i'm going to drag it drop it here and then take it in front of her um bring it somewhere here turn and adjust so just going to try and manipulate it along the way what we can do is to make sure the apron covers the entire body okay right now we're going to mask out the areas that are not supposed to be visible like this part is not supposed to be visible it's supposed to be around her neck so it's supposed to go back there her hand is supposed to be on this part of the apron so we are going to mask that out and to do that we are going to click on this icon here this very icon and then activate our brush to b is the shortcut or you can just come over here and select this let's increase the size of the brush and then increase the opacity um let's make take make their foreground color black so we just click on this arrow here and then we erase so we are going to erase the aspect that is not supposed to be visible let's zoom in so we can do a better job so i'm going to erase this and erase that then i'm going to now make the foreground color white the shortcut key is x so x tints changes it from black to white or vice versa so now let's reduce the size of the brush and restore reduce the opacity now and restore sections of the apron that you still want to see appearing so i'm going to do a quick job here and uh, see you after i'm done with the masking but you get the concept already all right so now let's before then before i start with the speed uh let's mask out this hand which is the most difficult part so we are going to now reduce the opacity for the apron all right use our pen tool so the shortcut key is p 
to select around this the hand and when we are done we max that aspect out so we are going to use this pen to make sure it is set to path not selection to path and then select around this so we are going to go around it and be fast all right with this selection done we are going to just um click on selection yes then we have the selection activated we activate our brush to shortcut key is b increase the size of the brush increase opacity and then we erase this aspect out let's increase the let's increase the opacity for the apron so you see the hand is maxed out out of the apron so what we are going to do is now carefully um, max out all the areas that is not supposed to appear there's a drop down shadow to the apron and that's what is causing this dark version here so when we turn it off you realize it will not be there so now you take your time and apply your drop down shadow to the apron we can also add some effects here which i'll do in a bit but this is the concept if you have any question you can leave uh, a comment in the comment section and i'll respond to that all right with that done you see the outcome we have here and that is it so now because of time i've already saved my text layout i'm going to drop them one after the other and uh, we'll be done all right so let's add the first one which is this one this particular one here it's already saved i'm just going to drop it so i'm going to drop it here like this i'm going to take it up above the apron like this next i'm going to drop this one which is supposed to be the title in here drag and drop it here and i'll take this particular one down i want the paper effect to show on it so i'm taking it here all right so there we go this is the fly we've put together and have some details down here you realize that we maxed out the shadows that was disturbing the hand and then we created the shadows which i expect you to be able to do um if you've seen our previous videos if you haven't you can check out our other videos uh, we took the text behind so this particular text is behind so that we can have the paper effect applied on it we couldn't take this behind because we want a food above the picture which makes a bit sense so some information is behind others are in front so right there we have this this here right here the clean out on the hair strands Okay, so there we go. This brings us to the end of today's tutorial. I hope it was very helpful. If it was, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are not already subscribed to this channel. And if you have any question, kindly leave that in the comment section and I'll respond. Have a good time.